Sheree Maris. I'm here with Toby Jevons, Fishery Manager for the Victorian Fisheries Authority. And we're here to talk about rock lobster. First question, what's the difference between rock lobster and crayfish? Okay, good question. Think saltwater lobster, freshwater crayfish, um, lobster, big claws, rock lobster, no big claws. Wow. So how many species of lobster are found along the Victorian coastline? Yep, so we have two types of lobster here. Um, primarily it's the southern rock lobster. We also have towards the eastern part of the state, up towards the New South Wales border, um, eastern rock lobster or green crows. So which ones do the commercial fishers target? And which ones do the recreational fishers target? Um, so primarily, Recreational fishers are targeting the southern rock lobsters. They're the most abundant across our coastline. Okay. And same with the commercial fishers. Um, they are a higher value um, species. They're found in reefy, rocky habitat with um, preferably lots of kelp and crevices for them to hide in um, and as a food source as well. How does it get that colour? Yeah, good question. So <clears throat> depending on the different types of um, food available to the lobster um, will have an impact on what colour they take on. So they might be a, a mottly colour or a deeper red. What are some really interesting facts about the southern rock lobster that people would be surprised to know yeah. or learn? So their whole life cycle is pretty incredible. They get together and mate in the autumn time um, and then the female then holds millions, up to millions of fertilised eggs under her tail. And is that when they're in berry? Correct. Okay. Yep. And that's because they look like tiny little berries? They do, yeah. And they're, hot, they're held under the, the tail flap of the female. Um, now she'll hold on to those for about um, three months, so up until September to November. She'll typically release them. And that's when also, during that time, that they're off limits, you're not allowed to catch the female, so it protects future generations. Correct, yeah, we have a, a winter closure for females from the 1st of June all the way through until the 15th of November. So between September and November, typically, the female will then release those fertilised eggs out onto the ocean currents, um, where they'll spend up to two years drifting around out there, um, undergoing 11 different developmental um, changes. And that last stage is quite incredible. They actually look like a miniature rock lobster, but they're, they're transparent, so they're see-through. And at that point, they'll swim into shore to find some suitable um, habitat to live in, so some reefy, rocky ground. And then they'll, um, over that first year when they settle at that place, they'll undergo about 20 different sheds of their, their shell. Because that's the only way they can grow. So their hard exoskeleton yes. can't stretch, so they yep. need to shed to grow bigger and bigger. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and at the end of that, that first year, they have all their colour, so they've, they're fully pigmented and they look like um, you know, a miniature little rock lobster. And what's their lifespan? Uh, they live uh, 20 years plus, um, growing over um, 200 millimetres carapace length, so quite long and over you know, 5 kilograms plus. So she has means and means of eggs, but there's no parental care. So I imagine there must be a really high mortality rate. How many do actually survive from the eggs to the adult? Yeah, spot on. So um, of those millions or so eggs that she'll release, um, only a couple will make it back and go through all those developmental stages to find themselves onto a place to, to live out their life under a ledge. So those ones are the absolute survivors. They're the best of the best. Absolutely. So there's a season where the females are protected when they're in berry. Yep. Are there any seasons that the males are protected? Yep. So um, we have a full closure of males and females from 15 September through to 15 November. And again, this is a time that um, lobster molt annually. So they shed their, their, their shell so that they can grow into a new one. Um, and it's during that time that they're quite, they get a softer shell um, and they're much more vulnerable during that period. So they're protected as well. And so recreational fishers have been playing a really important role in understanding more about the population dynamics of the southern rock lobster. Can you tell us more about that? Because you've just finished a three year study. Yep, spot on. So um, each year we undertake a, a stock assessment process, all right, where we look at a number of different indicators or bits of information that are telling us about the health of the stock. Um, prior to the three year recreational tagging program that we've just put in place, um, we knew what 
the tape is under the commercial sector um, because they're managed under a quota system. So their catch is, is what we set each year. A big piece of information that we're missing is the take from the recreational sector as well and participation in the recreational lobster fishery. So it's a really key part as a fishery manager is understanding what you're taking out of that stock each year so that you can manage that take sustainably into the future. And so how did that program work? We set up a program whereby lobster fishers were required to tag and report every lobster that they took. So uh, recreational fishers um, download an app, they set up an account, they order some lobster tags through the account, um, and then every time they go out diving, they've got their tags in their dive bag, and if they're lucky enough to get a lobster, um, they put the tag on within five minutes or 50 metres from when they come in, um, and then they report the use of that tag through the app. So what were the major findings from the three years of data that you collected? You know, what, what we're getting an understanding is, is, is when are people targeting lobster? Um, what methods are they using to target lobster? Um, how many are they likely to take each season? We're also, this, this is all helping us to engage better with recreational fishers as well. And it's been really positive to be able to go to dive clubs, present their data back to them and show how they're contributing to us managing the fishery better into the future. I imagine it must be quite empowering knowing that you can still do something that you love, but you're also helping to protect something that you love for the future so it is sustainable. The program has obviously been a massive success. So successful, you're gonna keep that program running? Absolutely, so the, the program, it really was a, a progressive, innovative approach in, in achieving recreational catch estimates. Um, and it's received um, international acclaim and high accolades from the Fisheries Research and Development Corporation. Um, we have earlier this year committed to making the three-year trial now as an ongoing program. And what that means is that each year we have this information from both the recreational sector and their catch and the commercial sector and their catch feeding into our stock assessment process, again putting us in a better position to manage that fishery into the future. I think the other really fascinating thing is that's not the only way that recreational fishers can actually help with data collection for the southern rock lobster. There's another way that they can help as well, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So we also have a, a tag recapture program. Um, so with the assistance of the commercial fishermen, over the last 20 or so years, we've tagged over 90,000 lobster out there. Um, we've recovered about 20 of those that have been recaptured. 20,000? 20, 20,000 of the 90,000. Wow. Yeah, and what that is giving us, so um, if wreck divers ever find um, a small tag that's inserted into the abdomen of the lobster, it's a little green tag, um, and it has a number on there that they can call and provide details such as the location, um, the length, um, and the time and date that they caught that lobster, we get information about movement and about growth that helps us again um, increase our understanding of what's happening um, out there and improve, improve management of the fishery. So with this additional um, recapture program, what are you finding out about the movements of the Southern Rock lobster? Are they home bodies? Or are they kind of more nomadic and move around? They are homebodies. They're pretty shy in nature. They hide under their ledge and generally they don't move far or they don't move at all. So what does the future look like for the Southern Rock Lobster Fishery? Yeah, we're in a really great place, Sheree. Um, we've got a recreational sector who have fully embraced the program. They've implemented the practices into their dive routine. We're getting better information feeding into our annual stock assessment process. We've got a commercial sector managed under a, a conservative catch level um, aimed at rebuilding the stock over time. Um, we're heading in a really good direction. So it's fair to say that the southern rock lobster fishery is rock solid. Rock steady, Sheree.